actually kind of drawing right over the picture. Angles, 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 angles. So now, in between these dots to the left, I'm going to sketch angles. Now, I'm using the ebony pencil so that you will see. For the most part, I would use either a 4H <coughs> or uh, my HB. And do you see how I'm getting angles? Angles, angles, angles. Nothing round, angles. Try that for me. The one thing I'm looking for also is this distance, this opening. How wide is this eye open? Here, uh, you know, it's a, it's a normal size. Sometimes there are people that there's, their eye is open so wide you can actually see the white at the top. Usually they're a little cuckoo. Cuckoo. All right? So check that distance out. And I'm looking for angles. And we're drawing the opening of the eye. <coughs> Work lightly because we are not doing the eye of Marge Simpson. There will be no outlines around this eyeball. Somebody is paying me $300 to do their portrait. They don't want a dark, heavy outline unless they are wearing eyeliner. You can take the makeup and concern into, into accountability. And then once I like what I have, then I'm going to go and round this out. Look, I'm going to flatten this out a little bit on the bottom, on the top. This too, I'm going to do this and round this out. Nice. Still all lightly. Okay, look, it looks like the Partridge family. And then I'm going to look and take, a, look, there's this little tear duct here in this little triangular spot. So I'm going to put that line in there. And then while I'm doing angles, I'm going to take a look at this eyelid. You see this eyelid and where this line comes? And I actually draw right on the picture to get an idea. And I'm looking again for angles. And the distance here, between here, that negative, that negative space. And then underneath, there's also this little thing. So you see, I'm not drawing this eye in its final, final stages. I'm breaking it down into angles and shapes. Angles and shapes. Like this reminded me of a partridge bird. And then I'm going to also remember that the eyeball is just that. It's a ball in the <coughs> socket. If I could pluck my eye out of the socket and have it hang by the optic nerve, sometimes you can see that on cartoons. They'll do that, the whole eyeball to make it come out. It literally is like the size of a ping pong ball, or maybe a little smaller, in your head. So that tells you something. Okay? These eyelids are cylinders. Do you see how they're cylinders? They go around. Down here, this is a cylinder. This whole eye thing kind of is a cylinder. It's dark here, it gets lighter, and then it goes back in again. It has a cylindrical look. Because light values tend to do what? Go forward or come, go back? Give me the answer. Light goes forward. Dark recedes, it goes in. So that's going to help us a lot, a lot. So are we to this stage right now, everybody? Do we have like this outline of an eyeball there? Work light because you might have to erase a lot. And I see people looking up here at mine. Yeah, I, you should look at mine, but I want you to look at this. <coughs> I want you to look at this. And if you have to do a light, sketchy line over the top, do that. Some of you may already have that light line on there from other people doing it. Now comes the fun part. When we do this iris and pupil, the colored part of the eye is the iris, and the dark is the pupil. And you will notice that, look, this iris is totally round. This pupil is totally round. The only reason we don't make it round is because the eyelid covers it. 
So I'm going to come over here, and that's going to be a little bit of a clue for me. How much of this eyelid, how much of this pupil, I mean, the iris is covered. And also, how much negative space, how much white to their eyes am I going to see? So here, I'm going to start up here. I'm going to work lightly, and I'm going to make a circle. Look, I'm sketching out a circle lightly, and I'm trying to get the same amount of whites of the eyes. This touches ever so lightly on the bottom here. And I'm going to look here. How much? Did I leave enough white part there? I think I did. And then I'm going to go and erase this away. And that's about right. You see that? It needs to be round. I had kids kind of making it square. They didn't draw it as a full circle and overlap that eyelid, and it came out funky looking. And also you can take a look at, of that full circle. If you go dead in the middle, that's where the, eye, uh, the pupil has to be. And we need to make it big enough. If we make the pupil too little, it looks like they're stoned. And we don't want that. We want them to look happy and healthy. Happy and healthy. And I'm putting it in the middle of that original circle I drew. And I'm looking for the <coughs> negative space here. What's left over of the iris? Is there enough? Is there too much? That's about right. That's about right. You see, I'm doing layout first. There's a lot of parts to the eye. And if you goof on the eye... That is the, the life of the face. That's the life of the face. So you want to make sure that you, know, you get that about right. How, how good are we? Pretty good? As long as it looks somewhat human. It doesn't have to look exactly like the one in the picture. The one thing I'm also going to outline, there's this little highlight here that kind of looks like a leaf. So I'm, and it overlaps the pupil a little bit. I'm going to put this highlight in very lightly because when I go to shade, I want to make sure that I leave that open. The highlight is key. Key. Because that's what gives the, um, the thing life. How good are we doing? So far, so good. I'm trying. Thank you, Father. Now comes the fun part. We get to color this in. Take a look at this eye. This pupil is about as dark as you're going to get. So I suggest you dive in with an ebony pencil and just make it nice and dark because there needs to be good contrast between the pupil and the iris and the white of the eye. So... Look, I just filled that in except where the highlight is. Just fill it in. I believe blind people don't have, the pupils are white. That's why it looks, that's why they wear dark glasses. They don't want to frighten people. So it's important that you, you make that nice and dark. And then if you also look around the outside of the iris, there is almost a dark outline, and underneath the eyelid is very dark, which would make sense, right? So I'm literally going to take my ebony pencil right now. I'm not going to mess around. If you're a little afraid, feel free to use the regular pencil. Look, I'm actually putting this darkness around the outside, and I want a nice, clean edge. Look at how crisp the edge of that, that brown iris is nice and clean not fuzzy and then let me put this dark shading I'm kind of looking at the shape that the shading takes on and this dark part goes behind that highlight and it is pretty dark all up in here now when I go to shade this I'm gonna put look at these little lines why am I making this shading do this you see what I'm doing? Why am I doing this? It kind of looks like the sunshine. I'm making these radiating kind of lines there. Riddle me that, Batman. Why am I doing that? And I'm going to switch off on my pencil now so that I get more of that, that look of the brown. 
Nobody knows why I'm doing that. It's the texture of the iris. Look at your friend next to you. It has these little these little filaments coming out. You can't even really see them on the, the picture I gave you. But that is the texture of the of the iris. So I'm actually going to, to do that kind of shading. And I may take my eraser right now, and I want to get this, this light area in here. I'm going to draw with my eraser and pull that light spot out and then go back again. Here the brown part is a little darker. And then even here where the highlight is, I think I made that a little too dark. I'm going to lighten that up and then half of it also has a little bit of gray. I'm going to darken behind the, the highlight because that's why I see that edge. And I'm going to go back and make sure that this is dark enough around the outside. Needed eraser is a nice help. Because I'm going to go in here now and kind of lighten everything up. But it takes a little bit off at a time. And then I'm not going to go nutty. If it looks like an eye, I'm going to leave it be. I can always go back later and play with it. I do want to bring out this white spot. That highlight, there should be a spot that is as white as the paper. Because that's what brings uh, life to the eye and gives it, um, gives it depth. I think my drawing looks better than what's being projected, if I do say so myself. And if you need to use your pencil uh, eraser as a drawing tool, please do. And I do have caps up here. And look, sometimes I'll even flick this in. I want to, I want to uh, get that texture going. And you'll see, we'll probably end up going back again to make some adjustments. Now, then I'm, now I'm kind of looking at my iris overall, and I don't want it to be too dark. Like, I still want to see that, that lighter edge going on. How we doing? Make sure when you're kind of done, look up, because I want to move on. You can always go back, because I want to give you enough time. I want to cover everything so that you have an idea. This little tear duct here, when I get allergies, this thing itches like crazy on me. Anybody else have that? I just keep rubbing it and rubbing it up. But look at how dark it is in the picture because of the lighting. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with my regular pencil, and I'm just going to make it dark in here. And look, there's that little highlighted thing because they are like, it's like a little ball in there. So I'm going to just take that original line and I'm just going to shade that in and blend it in a little bit. Just to give it the idea that it's got that. And you can actually look at your colleagues on your table and you'll, you'll actually see what I mean if the picture in the um, packet isn't clear enough. And now here comes the important part. What, don't shoot until you see the whites of their eyes. <coughs> Famous revolutionary war saying. <coughs> that means you need it to be close enough, right? So we have to make sure that we keep this part of the eye nice and clean. We don't want it to look too dirty. Now, since it's going to be white, and since this is a Caucasian, I think it's a woman, this is very light too, the light skin. I know, see that my outline here is very dark, so I'm going to lighten it up a little bit with my kneaded eraser because I don't want to have any outlining there. And I'm going to use my regular pencil. Sometimes I actually use a 4H. And look, this is a cylindrical or it's a ball shape. So it's darker where it goes back and it gets lighter. It's darker back here, it gets lighter, even though there's a shadow there. 
but you have to remember that it's white in color. So we can't get real heavy with it. So I'm just going to take my cue from the photo here. And I'm going to do a little bit of light shading in here. I can always get darker. And I'm going to just blend that in. This person actually has those pink blood vessels showing. I'm not going to put that in there, figuring that the person paying me to do this really doesn't want that. And I'm going to soften it a little with the kneaded eraser. Now, in the picture, because of the way it was printed, there's a pretty heavy shadow there. I might make it a little bit darker, but I'm going to use artistic license and, and, and blend that instead, instead of making it a line. You see how soft it is? And then on the other side, too, most of the time underneath this eyelid where it goes over, it's going to be a little darker. The other side is very dark because of the lighting. So I'm going to go see how dark my number two pencil can get because it's still not as dark as the iris. And I'm gradually going to lighten up and I'm looking at the shapes of the shading going on in there. But I want to keep it nice and soft. I don't like those. I'm not going to section it off like they're showing there. And in fact, right next to the iris, there's like a little light line. I'm going to take my kneaded eraser and just erase that away. That's how close you will start to, to look at this. I may take my ebony just to make this dark under, a little darker. I'm not pressing real hard underneath here. Because I'm the queen of contrast. Squint test all the time. Squint test, squint test. Like here, even here, I can see I have to lighten this, darken this up, lighten it up a little there. But we're getting the idea. How we doing? Questions? Questions, questions, questions. Now, I'm actually seeing stuff in this puffy. I don't know, this person had little puffy eyes. They were out the night before. And also, you'll see the thickness of the skin by the eye. The eyelashes don't come out right where the skin meets the eyeball. The thickness of the skin is there. So I'm actually going to sketch that in a little bit so that I know where the, um, the lashes are going to go eventually. I need to clean my eraser up. How we doing? So far, so good? I need to fix my... So we're getting there. Is it starting to look like an eye for you? Okay, good. Now here's the important part. The fun part's over until we get to the eyelashes. The important part is really the stuff around the eye because we've got to get it to tie into the other parts of the face, okay? So we need to take a look at what's going on around in this eyelid. The upper lid and the lower lid are both cylinders. They're both cylinders. They're like large tubes, so it goes in, where it goes in, it gets dark. Where the cylinder comes out, it gets lighter. And where it goes back in toward the eye, it gets darker again. So same thing here. Look, it's a little darker where it goes in. Where it gets a little puffy, it gets lighter. And where it gets darker, it gets, where it goes in, it gets darker again. So, and you can see this on the original. Look, darker here, it gets lighter, and then it gets darker again. So what I'm going to do, instead of leaving this a dark kind of a line, I'm going to separate this out. I'm going to make this a little thicker. And then I'm going to let it fade away. And this is really kind of fading away into the eyebrow, which is also a cylinder. I'm letting this fade away. Fade away. Fade away. Fade away. 
and I'm, you know, I could play with this so that, you know, my strokes blend together, but I am going in this direction to try and get that, at least that contour is going that way. And then I'm gradually going to lighten up to the top of that crease. Let that fade away that way, fade away that way. I want to thicken this. I really don't want this to look like too much like a line. So now I have a cylinder. You could actually turn this this way if it's easier for you. Like for me, it might be a little easier. And then it's a little bit darker where the eyelashes are going to come out. And I'm going to let that fade out. So I have the crease. I'm letting it fade out. I have a little bit of light shading underneath here. And I'm going to let it fade out. You see how we're getting there? And it also is a cylinder this way. That's why it's so dark in here. You can actually touch your finger in here. That's going to end up being the bridge of the nose. So I'm going to start getting dark in here. Look, this whole section is going to be dark. Even in here, it's dark. Depending on the lighting, you'd have to see what your original picture looks like. But do you see how I'm filling that in? This is going to end up being the part of the nose. <coughs> You see where I'm getting this, guys? And in fact, my pencil's running out of juice. So I'm going to take the ebony pencil now because this is pretty dark the way they have it. And I'm not pressing really hard. And it's a little dark in here. I'm still remembering, though, that this crease comes around. This is dark in here. And let me show that to you here. You can see how I'm starting to. This is my original. I really have to work on tying the nose in with it, but you can see where I'm going with it. And now I'm going to abandon that ebony pencil and I'm going to start shading this around. It's still kind of doing this. Look at the shape of the shading. Shape of the shading. Underneath here, it's a little dark. Over here, it's a little darker, not much, because this also is a cylinder. You see how I look for basic shapes, my friends? And then as the eye comes out, look, it gets lighter. In fact, I want to get rid of this outline that I originally put there, because it should just fade away. Fade, 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 fade. I'm barely touching the paper. It's a little bit darker where the eyelashes are going to come out. I'm sorry that I'm moving so quickly. Now here, look. What did I do wrong? What's right here that I shouldn't have? A dark line. So I have to say to myself, why is it that I see that edge there? And I'm looking at the eye, and you know what? This needs a little gray shading on the white of the eye. That's why I see the edge. Here where the eyelashes come out, if you look, that's white almost with that skin. And then over here, my little um, cylinder is going to be darker. I'm going to use darker values for that. But I'm still going to make it a cylinder. So look at the shape that the shading takes on. And then here I ran out of space, but I'm going to kind of eyeball this. And look, I'm going to take my kneaded eraser. Thank God for the kneaded eraser. And I'm going to soften that up. Are you starting to get into my brain and see how I think? See how you have to start, and, and the longer I look at this eyeball, I see more and more and more and more stuff. I see more and more and more. And sometimes I have to stop already. And I don't look at the original, and I say, how does mine look? Well, mine looks pretty okay. For now, I'm just going to let this stuff kind of fade out into the paper, because we're not doing the whole face. 
This would be the brow. The eyebrow would come up there. Eyebrows are just a bunch of different <coughs> angles. They have a very triangular kind of a look. I do want to bring this up here. This is going to end up being our nose. How much time do we have? Oh, good. And let me fade this out. Look, it's darker here. Again, I have to also remember that the eye does this. That's why I brought my eyeball out here. Look, so you can actually see it. See, look, it does this too. Oh, do this to all the good stuff. All of this, you see? So it's like a cylinder this way. So we have to make sure that the values we use in here, even if it's to make a gradient, have to be darker than what we're using over here. So look. I still have my cylinder going here, but it's darker than my cylinder over here because I want this feeling of roundness, roundness. So we're making a face, Kristen. You'd want to divide this into three equal sections with little dots. So in the middle, pick a little, maybe like two inches in the middle or an inch and a half in the middle. Then you need another dot an inch and a half away and an inch and a half away the other side. Because that's how your eyes are. They're divided into three sections. Okay. Now I have to get good points on my pencil. Because it's going to be time for eyelashes. Girls know about this. You're going to have girls, pick girls that you want their portraits done. And they're going to have the mascara caked on. You know what I'm talking about. And they're going to have the heavy eyeliner on. And then they're going to have all those lashes down on the bottom. Or fake lashes. And But then you get those guys. You know those guys that have the most beautiful eyelashes? I don't know why the men got the beautiful eyelashes. We have to work so hard. Do you remember when we were doing the, the logs, the pieces of wood, and I was telling you when you go to shade to flick and curve? Flick and curve, remember that? That's how we do eyelashes. And we're going to look to see. These eyelashes are tough to see. So I'm going to show you my drawing. In this, if you look at the photo, you'll see that sometimes they flick in all kind of the same direction. The bottom ones are easier. Because you can see, look, they come almost they're like little triangles. Do you see that? They curve in a direction, but they'll cross. Also, when you look closely, you can't really see it on the smart board. Here, these, and I, and I actually drew on mine. They're going here to the left. As we get to the middle, they stay curved. They straighten out. And then as we get to the left, they go to the left. Do you see that? Look. So, watch and learn. I have a nice point on my pencil, and I'm going to do the bottom ones first. And you'll notice they do not come out necessarily right where the eyeball and the skin meet. They come out. Oh, I need to look at this. Look, they're coming out here, and I'm going to push and flick, push and flick, push and flick, push and flick, push and flick. Do I need to put every single one in here? No, silly. We just want to get a little indication that there are lashes there. And as you get in toward the middle of the eye, they are fewer and finer. There's more out here. Do you see? Can you see? Those are the easy ones. Be very delicate. That's why I put a good point on my pencil. On the top, and I'll use an ebony so that you can see. They, again, don't necessarily come from where the eyeball and the skin meet. It's up a little bit. On the side, they are bigger. And we push and flick, push and flick. As we get to the middle, they're going to shorten up and straighten out. Push and flick, push and flick. As we get to the left, they go to the left. Ooh, these came out better than my other ones. I gave them a little more curve up. Artistic license. <coughs> See, as compared to my other one? See, those went down, which is more, I think, like the photo is. But I did this, look, it kind of opens the eye up a little bit. It looks a little more cheery. 
This guy looks like they, he's, you know, he's been standing on a bus stop in the cold for 15 minutes. We're here. This is a little more cheery. You're the artist. You can do that. But do you see how the direction changes? On this side, it went that way. And look at your colleagues next to you. You'll see. You'll be able to see that. Down on the bottom, very nice. I may go over this now just to pull, pull these out. A light touch, push and flick, 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 push and flick. 